Thank you, Mr. Chair and Ranking Member Murray. I certainly look forward to working on this committee uh, with all of you, and I appreciate the opportunity uh, to participate. And uh, Mrs. DeVos, it's nice to see you again. Uh, thank you for being here today and your family as well. Um, and I think all of us here share a commitment to public education um, and understand the essential nature uh, to our democracy. Um, I would echo my colleague's call for another round, at least, of questioning, because I think our job here is not just to talk about ideas, but actually to drill down to how things actually work in practice. And so I want to talk about one of those situations that we began to touch on uh, in my office uh, when we met. And it echoes a little bit of what Senator Collins was just talking about in terms of a full commitment to our students with disabilities uh, and what Senator Cassidy was talking about in terms of access to quality education for children with dyslexia. Um, my son, Ben, experiences very severe physical disabilities. He has cerebral palsy. He can't speak. He can't use his fingers for a keyboard. He doesn't walk. But he's smart and the best kid on earth, if you, I do say so myself. Um, he got a quality public education at our local school. He's a graduate of Exeter Area High School in Exeter, New Hampshire. And the reason he got there was because countless advocates and champions before the Hassan family uh, worked so hard to make sure that he had the right to that education. And I am concerned that when students who experience disabilities receive a publicly funded voucher to attend a private school, they often don't receive adequate resources and in some cases have to sign over their legal rights under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. So do you think that families should have a recourse in the courts if their child's education does not adequately meet his or her needs, whether it's at a school where they get a voucher or in a more traditional public school? Thank you, Senator, for that question. And uh, again, I appreciated our uh, meeting um, earlier last week. Uh, let me be begin by saying I, I appreciate um, and, and uh, am thankful that you've had the opportunity with your son, Ben, to find the right setting for him. And um, I would advocate for all parents to be able to have that opportunity to choose the right school for their I, child. I actually, and I, I had the opportunity to send him to the same public school that my daughter went to um, because the law required that that school provide him resources that were never provided before that law was passed mm -hmm. because they're hard. And so the question is, will you enforce the law again, with regard to kids with disabilities, if they, if a voucher program did allow them to go someplace else, and the school said it's just too expensive, we don't want to do it. I think that there are great examples of programs that are already underway in states. Uh, Ohio has a great program, and in fact, Sam and his mom are here today, uh, beneficiary of the John Peterson Special Needs Scholarship Program. But I, I understand that, and because my time is limited, excuse me for interrupting, but what I'm asking you is there is at least one uh, voucher program in Florida, the McKay Voucher Program, which makes students sign away their rights before they can get that voucher. I think that is fundamentally wrong, and I think it will mean that students without, with disabilities cannot use a voucher system that a department under your leadership might start. So I want to know whether you will enforce and whether you will make sure that children with disabilities do not have to sign away their legal rights in order to get a voucher should a voucher program be developed. Well, I'd love to comment to the McKay Scholarship Program in Florida where I believe today 31,000 students are taking advantage of it and 93% of the parents that are utilizing that voucher are very, very pleased with the, and I'm, I'm sorry. as opposed to 30 some percent that uh, of uh, and, and, you are, and, and I'm school. sorry, but I, that isn't the question I asked. So for right now, I'm going to move on to one final question. I really do wish we had a second round because there's a lot here that is critical to our children, especially with disabilities. And with all due respect, Ms. DeVos has not answered my question. But the other question I had, again, because we don't have a second round, I'm trying to follow up on an answer you gave earlier to some of my colleagues. Um, 
I understand that there is a foundation, the Edgar and Elsie uh, Prince Foundation, which I take it is a foundation named for your parents. Is that correct? It's my mother's foundation. It's your mother's yes. foundation, and you sit on the board. I do not. You do not? No. Okay, so when it made its over $5 million donation to focus on the family, you didn't know anything about it? My mother makes the decisions for her foundation. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to turn to Senator Hassan for the last part of my questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Murray. Uh, just two quick things, Ms. DeVos. Um, I just wanted to clarify the issue about whether you were on the board of your mother's foundation. I have uh, 990s uh, up through 2013 where you're listed as the vice president and a board and member. So was that just a mistake on your part? That was a clerical error. I can assure you I have never made decisions on my mother's behalf on her foundation board. So the listing that you were the vice president of the board is incorrect? That is incorrect. Okay, thank you. Um, the other thing I just wanted to circle back to, uh, I want to go back to the Individual with Disabilities and Education Act. That's a federal civil rights law. So do you stand by your statement a few minutes ago that it should be up to the states whether to follow it? The law must be followed, federal law must be followed where federal dollars are in, in play. So were you unaware when I just asked you about the IDEA that it was a federal law? I may have confused it. Um, it guarantees absolutely basic protections to students with disabilities to ensure that they are afforded a high quality education with their peers. One of the reasons that it is difficult uh, to have this hearing and feel that we fully understand your perspective is because we do know that um, children with disabilities in at least some of the voucher programs that you have supported have gone with a voucher to a school because of their disability, um, had to leave the school. The school keeps the money and they go back to public schools that now have even less resources to deal with them. And many of us see this as the potential for turning our public schools into warehouses for the most challenging kids with disabilities or other kinds of particular issues, or the kids whose parents can't afford to make up the difference between the voucher and the cost of private school tuition. So I just would urge you to become familiar, should you be nominated, with the Individual with Disabilities and Education Act. And I, I do have to say I'm concerned that you seem so unfamiliar with it and that you seem uh, to support voucher schools that have not honored, you know, have made students sign away uh, their rights to make sure that the law is enforced. That's very troubling to me. Senator, I, I assure you that I, if confirmed, I will be very sensitive to the needs of special needs students and the policies um, surrounding that. And with all due respect, it's not about sensitivity, although that helps. It's about being willing to enforce the law to make sure that my child and every child has the same access to public education, high quality public education. And the reality is that the way the voucher systems that you have supported work don't always come out that way. And that's why it's something we need to continue to explore. Thank you. Certainly.